Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the 10 tools that I think you should know when you're getting into Photoshop. It's a bit of a follow-up to my video of 10 tips and tricks for Lightroom, uh, which if you haven't seen, you can go check out up here. And if you guys are anything like me, Photoshop can be a bit of a daunting tool. Like it's crazy capable and the amount of times that I've gone in there with some semblance of idea of what I wanna do and then an hour later end up just quitting the program because I got so frustrated and the little ants were running around and I didn't know how to make them go away and it just is so frustrating. Today I'm hoping to help you guys simplify, add some clarity so we can take a little bit of the fear and maybe frustration out of Photoshop. And these are the 10 tools that I use probably the most. Now this video is probably tailored more towards beginners or people in the middle of the road with Photoshop if you guys are experts probably this one isn't for you. But before we get into the video, I am gonna be doing a Lightroom presets giveaway for all of my automotive presets. And all you guys have to do is come follow me on Instagram, comment down below like your favorite car or something, as well as your Instagram handle so I can reach out to one of you. And I'll do that a week from when this video drops. So go put down your favorite car and your Instagram handle, come follow me on Instagram, and then one of you guys will win all of my automotive presets. All right, so let's dive into Photoshop. I'm just gonna give a really brief breakdown of how Photoshop works. Photoshop works on kind of like a layer system. So you build with your base photo, and then you kind of start stacking the effects that you want on top of that base layer, all of which you can click off, mask out, add just certain parts that you want. It's a pretty clever program, but it can be confusing when you start maybe working in the wrong layer or something. So the basics of how this works is we have our photo in here, and down in the bottom right corner, we have our layers. Now you can add different layers by clicking these here, and that's gonna add some new layers for you. And one thing you need to make sure of is when you want to work inside of one of those layers, that you are clicked specifically onto one of those layers. Otherwise, you might get working on something and realize that you're clicking on something else and that it's not working or doing the thing you want. So just make sure you're clicked on the layer that you want. Some other basic things that you can do is down in this bottom right corner, you can add all kinds of effects. So you can add levels, curves, gradients, you can change colors all over the place using all of these different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the 10 things that I use the most as a car photographer and some of the tools that I don't think you should be afraid of. So step one, the first tool that you can use is called Camera Raw. Now, if you guys are coming from Lightroom, this is going to be a really familiar app to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our background layer. We're going to click and drag it down to the plus button. And all this is going to do is create a copy of that layer. So for this one, we're gonna call this our camera raw layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that. We're gonna come up to the top and we are going to add the camera raw filter. Now this is gonna bring up a panel and it's gonna look a lot like Lightroom. So in here, you can do all the same things that you could do in Lightroom. So you can adjust your exposure, contrast, highlights. It looks very, very similar as you guys can see here. And this is where you're gonna do your basic adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick edit here so you guys can see how it works, but we aren't focusing on this particular filter. So there you go, we've got a really basic edit done there using our camera raw filter. So again, you know a lot of these tools if you're coming from Lightroom and how you can adjust your photos. So the next basic step that I think you guys need to know how to do is creating new layers, which I did kind of already show you, but let's go ahead and create a new layer. And all we're gonna do is hit this plus button down there, bam, you've got a new layer. Now it does help so much to label these with what you want to do. Another way you can get to that is by hitting Shift Command N and that'll bring up a layers panel and you can choose to name it. So for what I'm gonna do in this next one is kind of remove some objects and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So I'm gonna just hit remove, we're gonna make it normal. So that's how you can create layers. Now within these layers, you can see these panels up here. This tells that layer how it's going to interact with some of the layers above or below it. Um, overlay is one that I use a lot to do dodging and burning, which we will get into in a little bit here. But for our third step, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the spot healing brush tool. Now this thing is crazy, crazy powerful, and you guys should be using this. The one that's in Lightroom that you can use to heal it's okay, it's mediocre, it's like 30% as powerful as what it is in Photoshop, and this is why I come to Photoshop a ton is for this healing brush tool. So, the healing brush tool looks a lot like this Band-Aid here, and one of the quick ways you can get to it is by hitting J. You can see here, it gives you the quick command, so I'm just gonna hit J, we're gonna make sure we're on there. Up here, you can see all of my brush settings uh, and where I kinda have that at. 
type, content, aware, sample, all layers. So some of these things you do have to check and make sure that they're clicked off. Now you'll see how smart it is. We can come in here and I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and we are just gonna paint this away. Super easy. And we're gonna see how smart Photoshop does. Boom. So let's do that with the other door here. We're just gonna paint it away. And if you guys are using like a Wacom tablet or a Wacom, I don't really know how to say it, or even just your trackpad, if you hit control and option while you're using any of these brushes, and if you pull up on it, you can increase or decrease your hardness. I tend to keep a pretty soft brush all the way up. And if you swipe left and right, you can also change kind of the size of your brush. So that's a really quick way to adjust your brush sizes if you're using uh, a mouse or uh, one of these Wacom tablets or whatever. Okay, so once you've gone through and you've cleaned up kind of all the parts of your image that you want cleaned up, you can see that it is super smart and super fast to get rid of undesired things. So the next tool that I want to tell you about is the clone stamp. And this one's kind of the partner to the spot healing brush tool. Let's say the spot healing brush tool isn't doing what you want. It's not taking away everything you want, or it's not intelligently selecting the right thing. What we're going to do is we're going to hit S. S is our clone stamp tool. Now what you do with the clone stamp tool is you hit option and it's going to select kind of the spot that you want to pick. And then when you paint, it's gonna select what that part was and then paint over using that selection. And you'll see that there's gonna be a little arrow as I click here and it's gonna tell me kind of where it's referencing and painting over. And I tend to try and do it somewhere that's in line. By in line, I mean like on the same level as or might have similar lighting. So sometimes you'll have to click a new reference point, paint away the thing you want, click another reference point, paint away the thing you want. But this way you can get really nitpicky with some of the edits that you wanna do. All right, so for the next tool, I'm gonna to tell you guys about the lasso tool. So let's say we've got a sign here by our car and we need to be really delicate with how we paint that away because we don't want to paint over the car and obstruct kind of the clean lines of the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit L to get the lasso tool or otherwise it's up here in the lasso tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line across the car here and just generally, of course, okay? And it's gonna create the, the selection for us. Now what I'm gonna do is if I want to take the clone stamp tool, I'm gonna make my selection over here on the brick wall and I'm gonna paint away. Now what's cool about this selection now is I can paint down here outside of my box and it's not gonna affect anything at all. So this is one way that you can create a really cool clean selection and work in the details of your car without affecting something. Now this is really important. There's been so many times when I've gotten to this point and I have no idea how to get those like marching ants to go away. So if you hit command D, that is going to deselect. Now, of course, I did a crap job right there. Like, it looks awful, so don't judge that. But that just shows you that if you guys wanna work within a very small selection, you can use the lasso tool to create that selection. The next tool I will tell you guys about is the pen tool. Now, if you guys wanna be really, really particular about your edits, you can come and click the pen tool, click these lines, and make a really specific cut. So we're gonna just do the same kind of space here. And this is what a lot of people do when they wanna select the entire car is they will use the pen tool and quite literally trace across the whole entire thing. I'm not gonna do that for this example because I've got a bit of a trick that we can get around that. So once you've made your selection, you can come up here and hit selection. You can feather it out if you want, but there we go. Now we've got those marching ants again and we can do whatever we want within that space. Now, as I was mentioning, a lot of people use the pen tool to draw around their entire car so that they can make that car stand out and pop. I'm gonna show you guys what's really fun in Photoshop is the quick selection tool. So you can click on this guy here and Photoshop has come so far that sometimes you can actually just come up to this top button here, hit select subject and sometimes it will actually just pick that whole entire car for you and it'll just be like, oh yeah, there it is, great. And then you don't have to do anything. So you can see here, it does a decent job. Now we're gonna need to kind of tell it a little bit of a smarter way to do it. So if you need to add things to your selection, you can see that the little cursor has a bit of a plus button in it. And if you hold option, you can actually minus or subtract bits of the selection. So I'm just gonna hit hold option and paint away the things that I'm like, no, that's not my car, or you didn't quite nail the lines perfectly on that. So we're just gonna hit these, paint these away. You wanna add that spoiler back in. Maybe this will save you a little bit of time in your workflow. 
So once we have that selection made, this is where we can actually create a new layer using one of like our curves or levels or brightness. So we can come down here and let's say we want to add uh, curves to make our car stand out. So I'm going to hit curves layer and you can see it creates a whole new layer down here with that selection that I made on my car. So I'm just going to add, I don't know, let's just make it pop a little bit and then make sure to bring down the shadows so that it still sits naturally in the photo. Then you can see here, it just brightens the car and everything that was inside of that selection. So the next tool that I want to show you is called masks or masking is the tool that we use. What I want to do is I want to add brightness to this image, but just in specific parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a curves layer. We're going to add some exposure here. And what I'm going to hope to do here is kind of paint some details back into the rim. So I'm just kind of looking at my rims, boosting up my exposure here. And then I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to make sure to click on this layer. And down here on the bottom corner, you can see this little circle cutout thing. And we're going to click that. So we're going to add a mask. So here we've got our curves that we can come double click into and adjust. We've got our mask layer, which I'm going to double click into. And if you don't have the full screen there, you just scroll down and we're going to actually invert that layer. So we're going to grab our brush tool, which if you hit B is your brush tool. And we're going to paint back in the layer that we want. So you can see that we've got a black mask layer. And so we want to make sure that we want to paint back in kind of the opposite. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to grab my brush. We're gonna take our flow. We're gonna make sure it's at about 100%. You can see my brush settings here. We're just on a soft round brush. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint in white over our black mask. And you'll see what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna bring those details back in. So there you go. You can see real quick here what's happening to those rims. We're just adding light there. So then if you take a look in the bottom right corner here, you can see the little white parts that we're painting back in. That's the parts that we're kind of bringing that mask forward. And there are so many ways that you can use the mask tool. It gets a little bit complicated, but this is probably one of the tools that I use the most. So there you can see we have very simply brought in some brightness and masked in just the part that we want brightened. And I didn't do the cleanest job. I know y'all can judge me down in the comments below, but at least you'll be signed up for the free Lightroom presets if you put your Instagram handle down there. So that's good. So one of the tools that I use probably the most in Photoshop is of course removing items but also coming in and dodging and burning. You can dodge and burn in Lightroom and in my previous tutorial I've shown you how to do that on Lightroom Mobile as well but this is how I dodge and burn in Photoshop. For me I create a new layer. I change the way that that layer is going to interact with the underneath layers by selecting overlay and then from there I hit B to get my brush and it's really important to make sure that your flow when you're dodging and burning is probably no more than 10 because you want to be really subtle with how we dodge it and burn it in. If you hit command zero, it, act, it always will reset your photo. So let's say you're zoomed way in. We're doing some dodging and burning in here. Look, we're dodging and burning. We're bringing in some details. We're having a good time. And I want to zoom back out to see how it's looking on my overall photo. You can just hit command zero. And there we go. So you can see on our layer here, we've got layer one, we've got a white brush. And then when we paint in white, it's going to add light. And when we paint in black, it's going to take away light. So with my flow at around 7%, I'm going to zoom in and kind of paint in the details that I want to see. And there you can see that you're just kind of painting in, dodging the light in. And if you hit X, X will switch from white to black or whatever swatches you have here, it will kind of switch between those two. So X is a quick way to go between your dodging and burning. Then I'm going to bring my flow down a little bit because I don't want to add too much burning in here. And then you can just paint over the place that you want to add burning. And then if you like to stay organized, you can always come in and label that layer so that whatever you've done, you can just turn on and off and you know exactly which ones you're doing that to. Now, the last thing I want to tell you guys about is if you have the latest update of Photoshop, they have added a really cool new tool called sky replacement and they make it super easy. So if you've got a great photo of a car, but a really dull sky, all you have to do is go up to click edit and in there you can just hit sky replacement tool. You can select any of these kind of really cool skies and you can paste it over your photos. It's pretty incredible what you can do. 
I'm not sure how much I'm gonna be using this tool specifically because once, I don't know, two weeks down the road, everyone's gonna have the same looking skies. So it might be fun if you just go out and take photos of cool skies when you see them and then you can upload those into your photos with pretty much ease now, which is pretty friggin' awesome if you ask me. So there you go guys, that is a pretty quick overview of the 10 tools that I use the most in Photoshop. It can be a very daunting program and if you guys do have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. You can also come join the Patreon that I have of the Car Creative community. Uh, over there I'm answering your guys' questions and going a lot deeper into what I do with Photoshop, Lightroom, my car photos, my car business, how I do what I do. So feel free to come join me over there. But I do hope that this has been helpful. So if it has, please let me know by hitting that like button hit that subscribe button for me and I will see you in the next one. Peace.